Oh, that was difficult with that many books. As you can tell by this title, hopefully, that we are going to be discussing a March book off. There was one book I was looking for that I thought I had. I don't know what happened to it. I apparently don't have it anymore, and that's kind of a bummer because I never got a chance to read it. Sad day. But we're going to be moving on from that and talk about at least the 16 books that I do have. And yeah, I did say 16. So I might butcher half of these names that I'm going to try to say. So, in advance, please bear with me. I am trying my best. And, yeah. Let's, so, without further ado, let's just jump on into it. Ignore the open closet behind me. There's another bookshelf back there. And believe me, I thought that's where I had that book I was looking for back there. But, um, no. I think I accidentally gave it away when I didn't mean to. Oops. <laughs> My bad. Won't do that again. Anyway. Books. That's what we're here about. Alright. Th this first book I did pick up is a Frankenstein book. And hopefully most of you have heard about Frankenstein. But if not, I will go into the details with it on the back. In an attempt to create a perfect new being, scientist Victor Frankenstein secretly assembles a collection of body parts and activates it with an electrical charge. The result is horrifying, even to his maker, and is never named. The hideous creature escapes the laboratory and searches in vain for friendship. Despairing, he returns to Frankenstein and demands a partner as his right to happiness. But when Victor destroys her before she is completed, the monster vows vintage on everything he holds dear. And that is Frankenstein. And if it sounds really good, definitely pick it up. Or definitely pick it up. Definitely pick it up. Uh, hopefully the whole video is not like this. Okay, moving on. She says wisely. The next book I'm excited that I got, because it's also, they're also movies, but when I seen there was two books in one, I was all for that. And that is Happy Death Day, and Happy Death Day to you. And if you don't know about the movie, where have you been? Because it has the boy from To All the Boys I Loved Before playing Carter in this movie. And, ah! Oh, exciting. And I love this. It's about a girl named Tree. She keeps reliving the same day over and over again in a time loop. And it's always her birthday. And she has to find out who the killer is before she gets killed the last time. So, they're basically just trying to do that, and then in the second one, they, it happens again, but I don't want to give too much away in case if you haven't seen either movie, so if you haven't, shoo shoo, bye bye, or just fast forward until the next book pops up on the screen, but definitely check these two movies out, they're really good, they're my favorite horror movie of the year, so yes. Yeah. Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to you. Okay, moving on. I don't want to, but we got to. The next book I picked up, this is a sequel to The Queen's Risings. Have I read it? <laughs> no, but I got the second one and I need to binge read a lot of books because I now have like the second or third to the series I really need to read. But... The story of it sounds really good, so let me just tell you a little bit about the Queen's Reassistance. 
At long last, Brianna is a mistress of knowledge and is settling into her role as the daughter of Davin McQuinn, the disgraced lord who returned to Maniva to reclaim his house. Though she's just survived a revolution that will finally put a queen back on the throne, she faces yet another challenge, accepted by the McQuins, but as Queen Isil Cavanna's closet confident, she'll have to balance serving her father's house with serving her country. And then there's Card Terrier? I have no idea, but we're going to go with that. And that is the Queen's Reassistance. Like I said, I might be butchering a little bit half of these things, but bear with me. I try to work my way through them. I'm still getting used to doing book hauls, even though I've been doing them for quite some time now, but words, man. Words. Alright, this next book I did get because I was kind of excited about it and I heard a little bit about it, and that is Opposite of always look at the covers i like it like oh all right this is a book about two teens who fall in love over cereal yes you heard me right it said cereal about a boy stuck in a time loop and the moments that make a life worth reliving Jack Ellison Keen, Keen of Almost. He almost made a valedictorian. He almost made varsity. He almost got the girl. Until. When Jack and Kate met at a party, bonding until sunrise over their mutual love of Fruit Loops and their favorite flicks, Jack knows he's falling hard. Soon she's meeting his best friend, Julian and Franny, and Kate wins them over as easily as she did Jack. So Jack's curse of almost is finally over. But this love story is complicated. It is an almost happily ever after because Kate dies. And their story should end there. Yet, Kate's death sends Jack back to the beginning, the moment they first met, and Kate's there again. Beautiful, radiant Kate. Healthy, happy, and charming as ever. Jack isn't sure if he's losing his mind. Still, if he has the chance to prevent Kate's death, he'll take it. Even if that means believing time travel. However, Jack will learn that his actions are not without consequences, and when one choice turns deadly for someone else close to him, he has to figure out what he's willing to do and let go to save the people he loves. So uh, that sounds really good, and that is the opposite of always. Again, just a gorgeous cover. Look at Oh, okay. Alright, this next book I got, like I said, I got some books that is like the third books in the series I really need to get to, in this case, that's what this one is. I won't go into full detail on it, but I did get the Blood of Witch, and it is the sequel to Truth Witch. Really want to get onto it, but I think I might save it close to Halloween-ish time. But I've heard some good things about it. Every story has two sides. Radiator, Protector, Blood Witch. I'm not going to even try to say that word. But I will just show you if it will focus. Anyway. It sounded really good. And like I said, I have the first two books, so I had to get me the third one. Alright, and again, with this next book, I have read part of the first one. I still need to finish it, but I did really like it, and that is 
Shadow, the Shadow Glass. It's basically about a girl named T who can raise spirits from the ground because she's a bone witch, which she didn't know it at the time. But the first person who she brought back was her brother. She had no intentions of doing it, but it happened. And that's all I'm gonna tell you about the series. Just, yeah, really little late it. And I really need to finish the first book. Don't hate me too much. Alright. The other book I have that I didn't think I would get, but I kind of see where the Six of Crow vibes live off of this book a little bit, but that is The Gilded Wolves by Roshana Kuroshi? I think I might be saying that completely wrong, but this is also gorgeous and it has those Eppled pages. Alright. It's 1889. The city is on the cups of industries and power. And the explosion of Universal has breathed new life into the streets and dragged up an ancient secret. Here, no one keeps tabs on dark truths better than Treasure Hunter and Wealthy Hoteller Severn? When the Eli ever-powerful Order of Babel coerced them to help them on a mission, Severn off is offered a treasure that he has never imagined, his true inheritance. To hunt down the Agent Artifact, the Order seeks Severn calls upon a band of unlikely experts. An engineer with a debt to pay, a historian banished from his home, a dancer with a sinister past, and a brother in arms, if not blood. Together they will join Severn as he explores the dark, glittering heart of Paris, what they find might change the course of history, but only if they can stay alive. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Glided Wolves. Doesn't it sound charming? You know it does. Why am I so weird? And again, here's another third book to a series I have not started. Oops. But do I have them all? I do now. And that is The Towering Sky by Catherine McGee. Welcome back to New York City, 2119. Skyscraper City, fooled by impossible dreams. Lita just wants to move on from what happened in Dubia. Until a new investigation forces to seek help from the person she's spent all year trying to forget rylan is back in her old life reunited with an old flame but when she starts seeing court again she finds herself torn between two worlds and two very different boys oh calico feels trapped playing a long con that costs more than she's bargained for what happens when all her lies catch up with her. White is still desperately in love with Lita. He'll do anything to win her back, even dig up secrets that are better left buried. And now that Avery is home from England with a new boyfriend, Max, her life seems more picture perfect than ever. So why does she feel like she, sh she would rather be anything but perfect and oh sorry about the glow there that is the towering sky and oh it's just so shiny all right the next one i have is the disasters the wind can change everything and just look at this gorgeous cover it's so shiny she put her hands on his chest and looked into his eyes. You have to calm down, Tate. Remember what happened the last time we messed with air 
and didn't have ourselves under control. Tate nodded shakily, his eyes daring to the beach. Okay, okay, I hear you. Breathe. Think, do not let them get to you, and remember, I'm right here. Right here with you. We're going to get your GP away from them together. Okay, you're right. Tay spoke more calmly as he focused more on the foster's green eyes than on what was happening on the beach. Ready? she asked. I think so, he said. Foster tiptoed and kissed him softly. How about now? Now I know so. It was then that the sandy ground beach ground beneath them shook. Tate's eyes narrowed. Okay, let's go be superheroes and save the day. This sounded really good, and like I said, the cover is just gorgeous. I couldn't resist. I picked it up because I want it. I got it. I buy it. Anyway. The next book I have is We Set the Dark on Fire. So that's this gorgeous cover. At the Media School for Girls, distinguished young women are trained for one of the two rules in their paralyzed society. Depending on her specialization, a graduate graduate will one day ruin her husband's household or raise his children but both wives are promised a life of comfort and luxury far from the frequent politic uprising of the lower class danielle varegas is the school's top student but her birth but her bright future depends upon no one discovering her darkest secret that her pedicure is a her pedicure is a lie sorry about that her parents sacrificed everything to obtain forge identification papers so Danny could raise her above her station now that now that her marriage is to an important politics son is fast approaching. She must keep the truth hidden or be sent back to the fringes of society where famine and poverty rule supreme. On her graduation night, Danny seems to be in the clear. Despite the surprises that unfold, but nothing prepares her for all the difficult choices she must make, especially when she is asked to spy for a residence group Desperately fighting to bring equality to Medial. Will Danny give up everything she strived for, for in pursuit for a free media and a chance for a bidden love? And that is We Set the Dark on Fire! And again, gorgeous cover. Oh! Why you gotta make a lot of fire? Alright, and this next book should be no surprise. It is The Mermaid's Voice Returns in this one. And if you don't know about Amanda Lovelace, she writes these short poems that are told in reverse. And they're just so good. And usually I can finish these within about a day or so. And I love this little mermaid tale. It's made out of stars. And it's purple. I like it. Alright, moving on. The next book I have is Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Gurdon. And it's basically a story about Hitler. The year is 1956. And the Axis powers of the Third Reach in Imperial Japan rule. To commemorate their great victory, they host the Axis Tour, an annual motorcycle race across their conjoined continents. 
surprise an audience with the highly reclusive Adolf Hitler at the Victor's Ball in Tokyo. Yale, a former death camp prisoner, has witnessed too much suffering, and the five wolves tattooed on her arm always remind her of the loved ones she's lost. The residence has given Yale one goal, win the race and kill Hitler. With the power to skin shift, Yale must complete her mission by impersonating last year's only female racer, Adiel Wolf. But as Yale grows closer to the other competitioners, can she be as ruthless as she needs to be to avoid discovery and stay her true mission? I mean, it sounds good to me. And it also says on the front, what if the Nazis won the war? And then there's a wolf on the cover. Okay. The next book I got is because I've heard some buzz going around and it's getting really popular like the seven husbands of Evan and Hugo did so I went ahead and bought Daisy Jones and the six by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I'm so glad I did because this book's also getting hype and I figured it would so that's why I picked it up when I did not sure when I'll get into these books, but I'm hoping very, very soon. And basically, this is told, this is about a band, and they come together quickly, and then they break up, and it tells them about, it. there's sections where there's about interviews on them, and like, I believe how the band started, and then part of where it broke up, at least that's what I've been hearing, and... I highly recommend you guys check it out because it is a popular item as well through our booktube community, so definitely pick it up. Alright, this other book I got, Pretend She's Here by Lunan Rice. Again, I'm sorry if I'm butchering these. I'm really trying, struggling, but we're getting there, we're getting there. Emily Longgrain's best friend died last year, and Emily hasn't stopped grieving. Lizzie Porter was lively, loud, and fun. Emily's better half. Emily can't accept the fact. Sorry, can't accept that she's gone. When Lizzie's parents and her sister come back to town to visit, Emily. Emily's heartened to see them. The porters understand her pain. They miss Lizzie desperately, too. Okay. Desperately enough to do something crazy, something unthinkable, suddenly Emily's life is hurtling toward a very dark place, and she's not sure she'll ever be able to return to what she once knew was real. Now that sounds good. Alright, then we have one more book and we're done with this book haul. And another book that's been flying around booktube is The Crown of Feathers by, I'm not going to even try to say the name, by Nikki Perrito. Yeah, I, let's look at the covers. Alright, I had a sister once, in a rural imp. <laughs> wow, what was that? <laughs> I had a sister <laughs> in a world ruled by fierce warrior queens. A grand empire was built upon effects of a phonics writers. Legendary warriors who soared through the sky.